This video is going to be my midterm review of the new Niner RKT9 RDO. So I did a first look video, which I'll drop in the description below where I went into excruciating detail about all the changes and all the components on this bike. And from that video, if you watched it, you'll notice that my level of anticipation of this bike was super high and I've not been disappointed. I started to talk about the ride quality in that first video and I held myself back because I only had one ride on it. So it's been about two months that I've been riding this bike. I'm gonna talk about the ride quality. I'll talk about some of the components and um, just let you know my thoughts on it. So let's go into the ride quality. This bike has a lower center of gravity than my previous Niner. And you can tell by how much seat post extends from the frame. I don't know exactly the amount of extension I had on my other bike because I already sold it, but there was not as much seat post. So that means kind of, you know, the, the top tube is lower, which lowers the center of gravity. And the handling on this bike is, it's phenomenal. The other bike, the other RKT9 had a 70 degree head angle with a 124, 71 if you had a 100. Video editing Clint jumping in here because I misstated the head angle in that original clip and I wanted to point this out. So this new RKT9 with a 100 fork in the high position now has a 68 degree head angle versus a 71 with a 100 fork on the old RKT9. And that means if you put a 120 fork on it, it's going to be about a 67 degree head angle in the high position. If you put this bike in the low position with the flip chip, with a 100 fork, it's a 67.6 degree head angle, which means with a 120, it's a 66.6 roughly, because when you change the fork travel by 20 millimeters, it's roughly about a degree change in the head angle. And so I just wanted to point that out because uh, that really helps the handling of this bike. This new RKT9, it is still very agile as you'll hear coming up in this video but it's also very stable now with the slacker head angle. I went into that first look video why I went with the 120 and I'm so glad that I did. This bike is much more agile than I thought it would be with the slacker angles. And I think one of the things that helps with that is the shorter stem. And I've, it's kind of been an eye opener of how stem length affects the handling quality of a bike. So my previous Niner had about an 85 or 90, but it had a steep head angle. So what I found is as you get to slacker angles, you're going to want to put on a shorter stem. That's why today's like enduro bikes have like a 30 or 40. I think my trail bike, my spur is around, I don't know, 40, 50. The shorter stem helps this bike feel super. I mean, this, this bike feels as agile as my previous RKT9 that had a 100 fork or 120, but it had a 70 degree head angle. I have not change the flip chip it's in the high position the handling has been so good that i've honestly not wanted to change anything about it i'll make a follow-up video to this where i go out on the trail and i ride it maybe for an hour in this position and then flip it to the low position and i'll walk through or talk through how that affects the ride quality because the flip chip as i mentioned in that first video is so easy to change i can just be out in a ride and change it like super quick the stiffness is phenomenal and, and I love a laterally stiff cross-country bike because when you're whipping back and forth between corners you do not want a bike that's going to have flex and it's kind of like you you push into a corner and then it and then you are fighting it this bike is not like that because it's laterally stiff and that's the beauty of carbon is it can be built up to be stiff where you need it to be and this bike's no exception so I like the lateral stiffness of this bike. The other change that I mentioned in that first look video that Niner have done is they've made the mid stroke a little bit firmer. Honestly, it, it, it surprised me. And so this bike does not feel as plush <laughs> as my previous RKT9 that had 90 millimeters of travel because of how firm the mid stroke is, but it does feel faster. It feels like it has a more solid pedaling platform I really like the old RKT9. I mean, that that bike, not only was that bike the, the longest lasting bike I've ever had, like I, I did pretty much no maintenance to that bike, but I also love the way it rode. So this bike feels more racy than that bike. It, like I said, it, it's not quite as small bump sensitive. It's not quite as soft in the mid stroke, but that does help it feel like a more racy, pedally 
bike. Is that a real word? But it just pedals great. And it, I have not done a time trial on this bike yet because I don't have the carbon wheels yet. And I've kind of been in an off season where I'm taking a break from riding hard. And so I, I have a feeling I'm gonna put in some of my record times on this particular bike. So going back to the cockpit, I like the 60 millimeter stem. I like the wider bars. This bike has 780 bars. My previous bike had 760. So I really, I, I just, it gives it a better feel. The, really the theme for this bike is everything has come together on this bike to make it I say this a lot but this literally is probably the best riding cross-country bike I've ever thrown a leg over the bar width the, the stem length the you know the frame the wheels I, I have been incredibly surprised at how lot, how much I like these stands arch wheels. This is not a cross country wheel set. Uh, these are actually heavier than the DT Swiss 1700s that actually are spec on this bike. If you look on the website for the four star build, uh, I guess because of supplies, they had to put the stands arch. I like the wheels. In fact, I am really looking forward to getting the carbon wheels because I just can't imagine this bike riding any better uh, as far as the lateral stiffness. Because they are a trail wheel, wheel set, even though they're heavier, they're, they're stiffer and it just, it helps the bike just pop in and out of corners. And where I ride, you're cornering all the time. And that's why I, I like the, the stiffness of the bike because you're slamming in and out of corners. The other thing that I really like is these Schwabby tires. Someone asked me in a comment if I like them better than the Max. My reply was, it's hard to say if I like them better because I would literally have to have a bike set up exactly the same and switch back and forth and I can't do that. But I, these tires have great grip. They don't feel like they have very high rolling resistance. So those are the two things I look for in a cross country tire, low rolling resistance and great cornering grip. And these tires, they hit that really well. The only problem that I've had with this bike is it had a little bit of a popping noise after the first two or three rides. And what I did, I finally diagnosed it. It was in the pivots and uh, I pulled out, uh, I undid the main pivot. Bearings were super smooth. I put some grease on the bolt, you know, put some lube in the pivots, put it back together totally silent. So I, I don't know exactly why, but that's the only issue. Now I mentioned in the first video that the remote lockout was something that I kind of was iffy on and I'm still kind of iffy for one reason. And that is if you ever wanted to put a dropper post, what are you going to do with this remote lockout lever? Like this, I, the dropper post for me would be on the left side. Uh, I, you maybe could put it on the right side, but, and you maybe could put it up here and like, like have two levers, but I, this remote lockout is exactly where I want it. And it's also exactly where I put a remote, uh, a, a lever for a dropper post. So that's the only downside. I have forced myself to use the remote, remote lockout and the more I use it, the more I like it. And so I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm glad it came with it. Uh, like I said, in that first video, it, it does require more maintenance in terms of like when I do the air sleeve maintenance on the shock, I'm probably gonna have to undo the cable. Probably not a big deal. I'm, I'm not really complaining about it, but it is something that I've made myself use. And when I use it, I really do like it. But it's just the fact that if you wanted to put a dropper post, I mean, I, I really haven't figured out what you do with it. A few other quick highlights. Uh, the Shimano XT has been perfect. Uh, the shifting has been spot on. The brakes, I, I mentioned in that first video why I like Shimano XT brakes and riding this bike for two months, I will stand behind that. And that is, it requires such little effort. And like I said, when I ride my local trails, I'm cornering and braking all the time. And it's just such little effort to, to initiate the braking. Not the modulation that I get with SRAM, but not that big of a difference either. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a, a follow-up video to this and talk about how it rides in the low setting. And I'll probably make that video on one ride just so I can really you know get a feel of it. And then I'll make a video uh, when I get the Stan's podium carbon wheel set. Uh, they still are back ordered. Uh, the, I need a center lock rear hub and that's not available yet, only six bolt. These are center lock rotors and I, I just it, I just want center lock because it's so easy to change the rotors back and forth. Yeah, that's my midterm review of the Niner RKT9 RDO. This bike is not only for people who like to ride fast, whether you race or not, right? 
cross country bikes are fun whether you race every weekend or whether you don't ever plan to enter a race. Don't rule out a cross country bike because they are, it's kind of like riding a, a motorcycle, a sport bike. Uh, you can have a Harley or you can have uh, a Honda CBR 1000. <laughs> this is a Honda CBR 1000. Whether you race or not, it's fun. But it's also good for people who want to do a little bit more trail. So you can run the 120, you can slacken the, the geometry out and make the bike more trail focused, probably leaning more towards like my transition spur. Now that bike has a longer wheelbase, it's more stable, uh, but you know, they're going to be a little bit more similar once I put this in the slacker position, but I'll make that a separate video. One more thing is I did change out the saddle. So I liked the, the saddle that came on it. It was a Sella Italia saddle. I liked the shape, but it was sticky and, and it was like my, my shorts kept sticking to it. I probably could have put some, you know, chamois cream or something on it to make it, but it, it, it was too sticky for me. And so I put back on my tried and true WTB Silverado saddle which my rear end is is made for or this is made for my rear end something like that but i love these saddles and i use these on most of my bikes that'll wrap it up for this video questions comments leave those below and i'll get to them as soon as i can and if you have not subscribed to the channel please go ahead and do so with that i will catch you in the next video thanks for watching